Okay, so let's jump right in, and um, the, the overall topic of this conversation is equality, a pillar of the new economy, um, revenue measures to advance equality in a new economy. And we thought we would divide this into two sections. Um, one is the issue of why greater equality uh, is important. How to make the argument to people that inequality is bad and equality is good. So that's one part of the conversation. And Chuck and David and Michael have some thoughts on that. And they'll each throw out five to seven minutes worth of, of thoughts and then um, we'll have a conversation. And then the second part is getting into the measures, the revenue measures that advance equity and a new economy that'll get into some of the more intriguing ideas about taxing Wall Street wealth and corporations and Sarah Anderson and, and Chuck will throw in a few things there, and then we'll have time for a bigger conversation. And um, let me just say a, a couple of words of introduction to this, because many of you on the phone and here have been working on equality and inequality for a long, long time. Um, and I also, you know, long before Occupy Wall Street. It is wonderful to have, by the way, a couple of people here from Occupy Wall Street and someone from Occupy Philadelphia and someone from Occupy uh, uh, Boston and also several people here have been quite involved in Occupy DC to help ground this conversation. Um, but even before the Occupy movements, I think that the New Economy Working Group and the New Economy Network were asserting that a new economy that we want would be rooted in three pillars. Greater equity, each ecolo ecological balance, and deepening democracy. That has been our vision. Um, and I think that, just say a word about um, inequality in Occupy, and it'd be really interesting to get people's um, reactions to this. In talking with Chuck, a lot of what we feel about the 30 years leading up to September and Occupy is that most Americans tolerated growing inequality because they felt that they bought into the story that started with Ronald Reagan, really, but it goes even further back, that America is an opportunity society and anyone can climb up the ladder. So inequality doesn't matter that much, as long as you're in a society where people can climb up the ladder. And that Occupy Wall Street's perhaps its biggest contribution thus far has been that it shattered that myth. Um, and I've been carrying around, I don't have it here with me, but a Time magazine of three weeks ago that has on the cover a ladder where the rungs are broken. And it is a big, long article about how you can't climb up the ladder. And it starts with a sort of, it starts with a woman from Occupy Wall Street who has $35,000 worth of debt and um, no job. And that's the new image in a way that's in people's minds and that has changed what had been the 30 year conversation starting with Reagan that said that <coughs> corporate, let business have its way, deregulate <coughs> it, that will bring prosperity and if there's growing inequality, it's okay. So. I think one of our questions to ourselves is, um, okay, it's out there. I mean, so if, if you shatter that story of the opportunity society, then inequality does matter. And how can we keep that um, space open and growing? How do we keep this inequality space open and, and growing? That would be one question. Um, are, you know, are there other ways to, to get that across to, to people. I think those are some of the issues that, that Chuck and David and Michael will get into. And then I just wanted to throw out a couple of other questions for this conversation. Um, one is the one that came up at Gar's session on Wednesday night, where somebody raised their hand. Uh, Gar's colleague, Ted Howard, quoted the Barack Obama speech saying inequality is the number one issue in the country now. And, and somebody said, how do we keep this from getting co-opted? How, how do we keep this from now becoming, you know, they'll come up with a little fix and then the issue will go away. It's sort of related to the first one. I also wanted to ask you all, um, we say at IPS that we're against extreme inequality, but we've never really posed the question, I think, honestly to ourselves of what is a level of equality that we'd be happy with. Um, a lot of people, you know, somebody's 
people have pointed out, epidemiologists have pointed out that in Japan, people live on average four years longer, and they assert that it's because it's a more equal society. So is the goal to be as equal as Japan, or is it to be more equal? I mean, what are we saying when we say we want greater equality? Um, and finally, um, this is where we want to get to at the end of the conversation. There's a million different proposals on how to address equality. I think what we have been saying in these conversations is, can we identify the campaigns or measures or ways forward that lead people on a more transformational path, as opposed to the quick fixes? And we want to try to put some of those on the table that might be more transformational and have you tell us that they aren't, or that they maybe are, or that they are under certain circumstances.